redshirt junior Nick Salzer met wrestling coach Steve Garland at an early age. I think I was in the eighth grade and came over to our house to uh, recruit my oldest brother Keith. And um, the one thing I really remember was uh, at dinner I would just sit next to him and just I was so consumed by his you know his personality I thought he was just so funny and I kind of just you know was drawn pretty close to him in that moment. I was recruiting his oldest brother, who was a total stud, his name was Keith. I drove from Ithaca, New York, I was working at Cornell University, and I drove out to Cleveland and met, met with the family, and here comes little Nick walking up the stairs from the basement. He was in eighth grade. One of those rare situations where you immediately click, you immediately have fun, it's not even work, you're just really enjoying each other's company, and I got really close with the family. Then I recruited his middle brother. So I've, I've, no, I've, I've followed his career all the way through, and what happened was right around sophomore, junior year, he made this huge jump. And, I, and you know, you can't do anything when they're that age in our sport, so I couldn't do anything other than I just kept recruiting his brother. His brother ended up going to Eastern Michigan. So Mr. Solzer calls and goes, I love you, Garland, I'm sorry, this is better fit for him, better fit for our family, but we just want you to know we got one left. And I said, well, man, keep me in mind. And, and as soon as we were able to call Nick, I was, I was at his high school, and I was at his home on July 1, and I said, I love you, and I need you. I, I want you on, in, on, on my program, and I want you with my guys. Once he was on ground, Salzer looked to his more experienced teammates for guidance. I just kind of, you know, hung on the coattail of Chris Henrik and I wrestled with him and I saw, you know, kind of the spotlight that he had and I took the good and the bad from that. You know, I really wanted to, to be one of the best wrestlers in UVA history and I, I realized that Chris was, you know, one of the best wrestlers. So I uh, tried to model my, my work ethic and habits off of him. Salzer used that experience to become an All-American in his sophomore season. I had to grind through a lot of tough moments, and I wouldn't say I wrestled my best at NCAAs, but I got the job done and I finished on top. So it was just a big, big point for me because I had to get through a lot of adversity in order to get there. And Following the season, Salzer worked to make his weaknesses his strengths. Because he had those areas of attack and he put the work in, he's gotten exponentially better in those areas. I mean, he's just really tightened up his game in those areas. And what that did, though, is freed him up to compete. And that was the next step is, okay, work is the gift you have. You're always putting in that and you got this ability and all these things. How are we gonna put it together? Because it's nothing wrong with having the goal to be a national champ. The goal's the goal, but let's focus on what I'm gonna do today. And then tomorrow when I wake up, what am I gonna do tomorrow? And then when I'm in the competition, all I'm thinking about is being the best steward I can of the gifts and talents I've been given. I'm just gonna sell out in this match, score as many points as I can, and then at the end, if I get my hand raised, so be it. When he made that decision to start doing that, and he started really applying that to his life is when his whole wrestling shot through the roof. Virginia's first major test of the season came on November 24th at John Paul Jones Arena against arch rival Virginia Tech. Down seven to three early, the Cavaliers won four straight matches to seal the win, their first over the Hokies in six years. Yeah, we uh, we have a really, really solid middleweight class. You know, you know, 141, Joe Spizak, then Gus, then Blaze, then me, and I think we kind of take it upon ourselves to get the ball rolling a little bit. So in that big duel, you know, I was actually pretty nervous for that, but once Blaze got that pin, it kind of, you know, allowed me to relax a little bit, and um, it was just so exciting to hear the fans go crazy after that, and I knew, you know, it was just my, time to do my job after. I think what it did was it showed our team that it's okay to be that good because he was darn good and, and man is it fun. I want to do that. That looks like fun. I want to wrestle like that guy and that's an awesome thing to see the guys on the bench start talking and thinking like look what this guy's doing out there. Man that, that, that look, he makes it look so easy. Well it isn't easy. And so then they start thinking, well, i got to start doing what that guy's doing. So I can't say what it did to the other team, but for us, I know it really helped us. Salzer took that momentum to the Las Vegas Invitational, where he would face off against Michael Moreno from Iowa State, who defeated him at last year's NCAA tournament. The matches there were, were really important just to you know, solidify my ranking, and it was one of my first big tests just because up until that point I hadn't faced anyone as high in the rankings as I did. I think I wrestled the fifth guy and the ninth guy at the time, so uh, I wrestled one guy that beat me at NCAAs, so that match was definitely a lot more important to me than some of the other ones in the past. 